Good afternoon, this is Mike Palmer from Mike Palmer Homes. Coming here from North Carolina on this beautiful April day, we just completed this plan called the Tanya 2. Um, quite a storied event here. Anyway, hey, we appreciate y'all uh, watching our channel and looking at our site. If you like what you see here, could you please hit the like button in the bottom corner? That would help us out a bunch. And if you like to see more videos, you hit the subscribe button because we've got always got more coming. Anyway, but enough about that. This is the Tanya 2 plan, and this is on a cul-de-sac lot. So it's kind of interesting how we had to set this up. It's a wedge-shaped lot. We had issues with septic. We had to dig test holes. We had to get a soil scientist out. And with supply chain interruptions and pandemics and everything, the local county's uh, septic septic office got very tied up and it took them months and months and this one between getting soil scientists who were backed up and busy and getting septic people out here it ended up taking us about seven months to get this get this permit well during that time all the lumber and, con and, and construction prices had shot through the roof just just drastically so unfortunately it was very sad i had to have a conversation with the people and say listen you know we can't build all these houses and go out of business so you're either going to have to uh, refund your money or uh, we, you're going to have to pay more for the house which was a very difficult thing you know hard to do but it was just a reality of the marketplace and it's happening all over just because you, you, you can't do it so it ended up coming on back on the market uh, but we have another couple in here is about to take possession so it all worked out pretty well anyway but that's that's just one of the realities in the marketplace right now anyway uh, beautiful concrete by Lake Norman concrete finishing if you see all these lines, the way they go diagonal, if this, if this, this is called a control joint. And what it's designed to do is crack, because concrete cracks, so it was designed to crack on those lines. If that crack followed up that way, you got to have diagonal lines so it, so it terminates, so it doesn't continue through. And we call these the horns. On the horns, you know, they have grooves there and there. Because um, that's a stress area, so if it cracks, it cracks right on that edge. Some beautiful picture framing. And I like the way they put a board here so you have a nice clean line along there. So sometimes you see a, some driveways have a raggedy edge there. I love the way they do this. So I hope we can keep them on our team just as long as they want to keep doing it. Anyway, so sidewalk walks around here. Now the wind has beat up our landscaping and we don't have the shrubs in yet. But nice big side entry garage. Uh, plenty of room out here for parking and whatnot pad here but the thing is about driveways no matter how big you make them they're never big enough and if you don't do it right up front if you add later it looks like an afterthought so um, you might as well do what you can while it's brand new because it's never going to be cheaper and never going to look more more appropriate and this is a three car garage there's a two car garage there and then a tandem garage i'll show you that when we get inside we get some nice coach lights up above um, this is actually that soffit is, is not white, it's actually an off-white trim to go with all this. Uh, we have some more warm colors. Let's go take a look inside. Nice touch of quality. Uh, natural blend weather ledge stone. And once again, just the details. Like a nice board and bat shutters. Uh, there's a returns. There's a return. I think that gives a little more stately look. And on the front, we have cedar shake up there. We've got some nice decorative dormers. Actually, it's concrete fiberboard shake made to look like cedar. But if you look up here, a nice metal roof accent. And a standing seam brown metal roof. And on that gable, we have decorative window and some shake. Now, just another point. This house here we're building, about to put stone on. That's the Jordan 2. That was a similar, similar, similar. This, this is where the retention pond was for all the silt. This was a very difficult lot to build on. And we had difficulty getting the septic, but we managed to make it work, but it did take us a long time. Anyway, there's a Jordan 2 over there we built. There's one one street over, and there's one right over there. Anyway, back to this house. Tanya. We have these columns. Now, you notice we did have to put these rails on, and they are kind of expensive. But the way this lot slopes, we want the garage up on the higher part, so you don't have a lot of steps to walk into. So this crawl space slopes down. And so... Um, if you only have two stairs, you don't need railings, but this has quite a few stairs. And you've got your random uh, flagstone pattern for the stairs. Really like that. Like a maintenance-free rail. 
these columns go up here with two decorative columns and they are uh, columns wrapped in with a mirror tech cap that's a composite same with a header up there that is composite um, so it won't rot but it does give you give you kind of a nice stately look um, of course on our ceiling our signature knotty pine tongue and groove beadboard and a nice mahogany door with beveled glass and side lights it's a cool looking door so let's go inside and take a look inside this plan you get this is a foyer way all right we got a nice mannington luxury vinyl plank floors gonna have this space here now that we do have there are some paint blemishes we just went through that's our final touch up so you're going to see these little blue squares with them don't be concerned with them but in this space we have a crown mold that cool light fixture i like that light fixture here in this foyer area it's not too large but you walk in you see your big great room here now this house is separated you got split so you got two bedrooms over there and your master suite over here but when you come into this great room you see right out all the way through to the back porch decorative fireplace here with a cedar mantle and a great big island over here big island with seating in the front and you've got a lot of nice spacious kitchen here that's over here and we've got a two usbs because it'd be a good area to charge a phone you've got your decorative tile backsplash and the fridge is here already how about that um Oh, and there's another thing. A lot of people will want to go with a wall oven, an expensive oven. And I can, I'm a fan of these 30 inches right here because they don't, they don't break the bank as much as the other ones do. You need a special cabinet, easy to replace. But uh, look at this thing. Got those nice high speed, uh, quick boil gas, uh, gas burners. You got a griddle in the middle. You got convect, all kinds of, all kinds of features. Nice heavy stainless steel here. Now with all these, it is nice, sometimes nice to have that double oven. You don't have to bend down, down. But, but I cook a lot with my 30 inch range and it's not even this nice, but it still has more features than I use. Anyhow, oh, we got under cabinet lights. That's pretty much standard underneath, underneath the cabinets there. And we like to go with a star pattern or like a, a pattern of uh, uh, these are LED can lights or recessed lighting. And they went with three pendants. Look at that. I like that, uh, that round beam. Now, it's been over here in the dining area. They have the same thing. You got a nice bay window over here. That's those diagonals. And when you come out here, you're looking right out at the back porch. Your screened in porch. All right. Nice concrete porch. Uh, maintenance free. 90 pound tongue and groove ceiling and look out back you got a great country view back here off this screened in porch went with screenies and the grass is just starting to grow brand new but you got a nice country feel down that way nice view over that way so this house has a great backyard and right out here got a screen door nice set of stairs going down wood rail in the backyard oh Back at the garage, there's an entrance there. Again, back in, back door for the garage. Anyway, let's go back in. A great room area. There's our cold air return. That's where our AC filter goes. But you see this, you're gonna have a dining table here. One dining area. All the way around, there's your foyer. There's your fireplace. And you've got an office here. Now the way I used to build this house before, this office had half walls here, two half walls, so you can see it, but they chose to, they asked if they could get a double door in here. So we put a double door, so you can close this, you can close these doors, make the office more private, or you can leave them open. It's got a great view out front, and we'll get this Craftsman decorative wainscoting on the sides for a little more decor now this, this hallway here this hallway is where you come in from the garage no i'm sorry that's a linen closet when you come in from the garage is into here into your laundry room so your washer and dryer is going to be here this leads out to your garage i'll show you that garage a little later nice big spacious garage but when you come in from your garage let me get this light on 
You come into the laundry room here. Of course, you've got a closet there and a coat closet here. You come in with your groceries in the garage. You come right in here to the kitchen. You've also got this right here. This is what I call a pantry from heaven because it's got a lot of space, a lot of shelves, a lot of room on the floor for things. So you can fit a lot in that pantry. It doesn't take up too much room. You come back in, you come into your great room here, or you can walk right down this hallway, like this hallway over to the master suite. Let's check out the master suite. Come here. Now, I don't like to be able to see right into a bedroom if we can help it. So you come here and you turn the corner. Then you can see into the bedroom. There's a bedroom door. But the master suite, we built them before with window seats out there with vaulted ceilings. More vaulted ceilings, but look at that. You got plenty of room for king size bed here. We got USB ports for your phone chargers on each side of the bed. And they, they went ahead, they did not want any carpet in here. So we skipped all the carpet and just put this luxury vinyl plank. Beautiful, beautiful wood floor in here. Um, the triple window out the back. But what's nice from here, you can look out into the screen porch as well. So you can leave these doors open when it's nice and this whole screen porch can be like an extension of your living room, an extension of your bedroom. And at nighttime at my house, rather than bending over and hassling with windows and screens, we have the same setup. We'll just open that door because you've got a screen porch out there and then uh, you know the dog can go in and out. And you can get that nice fresh air that my wife really seems to enjoy. Into the master bath, we've got these double ball catch doors, which I like very much. That way you can leave them open or close them, but they don't take up a ton of wall space. All right, that's a master closet in the back. Shower, we don't have the glass up yet, that's coming. But there'll be, there'll be glass up here. And this is called a cave shower or zero and two shower, zero curve. Walking this way and then down the slopes. And I like that exposed rock. Boy, that's cool. Um, it's like a pebble look. We've got the niche over there for your shampoo bottles. You got your controls over here so you can get things started before you get to the shower. And this has got a transom window as well up here for natural light. And I really like these shower heads. It's got the magnetic wand. Take it, just pop it back in. So you don't have a whole bunch of controls. You can just stand under there or pull it out, but you're not doing too many diverter valves. Look at these mirrors. Those are some cool mirrors. And oh, and they did a shiplap wall here trim detail or it's called ship lap or, or or nickel gap or penny gap just that old old planks like ships along the wall it's a nice trim detail over here's commode room of course not much to say there look at the, the, the tile pattern that's called a brick pattern but a one-third brick because the, the lines from one tile to another are one-third of a one-third the length of a tile long and they, of course, run them the long way. Long way with, with the uh, direction of the bathroom. Now, in here, once again, double ball catch doors. I don't like bifold doors for obvious reasons. Lots of issues with them. Um, closet. You have wire shelves in here, different organizer features, so you can... Hang things high and low, high and low, and then for anything long, hang on here. Got a super slide, so you're, you can slide your hangers from one end to another and another. Rack for shoes and or towels. But it's a good size closet and gives you a lot of space. And you even got some natural light, but to want to be careful changing in front of the window. You don't want to give the neighbors a show. All right, let's go back here. That's the master suite. Now, the other two bedrooms are clear on the other side of the house. Now, it's done for a reason. Guests, kids, whatever, sometimes there's a lot less noise and action if they're on the other side of the house. Now, over here, this is just a spare closet for linens, what have you, or you can take the shelves out and make it a vacuum cleaner closet. There's a bathroom here. Here's bath number two. Look at that granite pattern. It's a really cool granite pattern and it's matched right here. And we're going to have a glass, a glass door on top of that, but there's like a granite threshold. 
And look at that, that the floor took colors out of the floor. The floor tile with the counter with the shower matches up really well. And I really like this accent, mosaic accent panel. Some of them are, can be a little bit, they stand out a little bit. This one blends really nicely color wise. And normally we just put a fiberglass tub here, but this particular client asked for a shower. So this one came out real pretty. It's a really nice, uh, soothing kind of pleasant color combination in here. This one worked out really well. And we have two bedrooms now in this house. The bedrooms are not overly huge, but they're, you know, they're, they're fine. They're big enough for a bed and everything, but it's not, not the massive bedroom, but uh, that's what these people wanted. They wanted more garage and, uh, you know, the kids don't come home for long periods. They're pretty much out of the house, so that works. And this bedroom's a little bigger. Still a nice size bedroom, but uh, you know, 11 by 13, it's a decent size. And of course we've got Closet with your closet organizer system and, you know, ball catch doors. And these doors are called the three panel, three panel craftsman. So when we do a craftsman style trim, it's usually this, uh, that type of door. But we do all sorts of different uh, trim combinations. So there's no hard set rule. So that's basically it. You got the core of the house with your office and your pantry and your laundry room and your big open, open concept here, even with the porch. And your master suite's over here, your two bedrooms on that side. But let's go take a look at the garage. Okay, that's where this is where a big part of our life gets lived. In the garage. Now you got a two-car garage here, right? You got some extra space over there for a motorcycle or whatever, bicycles. You can net bump out. You've got some space over here for more things. And you've also open. I'm gonna open these doors. This area here, you've got your utility sink, you got all sorts of room for toolboxes, workbenches, but see your car is gonna be over here. So you got all kinds of room to work with without being squeezed by the automobiles. So you can easily fit two cars in here, keep them away from all this work area. You got that nice uh, um, utility sink to wash out whatever. Oh, this one's even got a, oh. Cover. You can do two levels of work there. Um, and then this is your one car garage or hobby garage. Put the lawnmower in here or the extra car you're working on or the, the hobby car or the kid's car can have its own space. And in here also you got all kinds of project area for lawnmower, four wheeler, motorcycle, whatever works for you. We've got two openers. Let's see, you got a different light switch here too. That's pretty cool. So this could be dad's work area here. It could be his space to do whatever he wants. And it's also got a back door. Which is you know, obviously a nice feature. That leads you out to your nice country backyard. So hopefully nobody will be building there for quite a while. Yeah. So anyway, that's your view of your garages. So we'll take one more look out front, just get another perspective on this house. Tanya, we do have plans available for sale. If that helps anybody. Unfortunately, we can't build for everybody. We gotta keep to about a 30 mile radius. And there's the neighbor's dog. Now, once again, thanks for watching our video and visiting our site. Please contact us if we can be of service.